All right, how are you doing? So today we're gonna do another Privesk room here in Trihack Me. It is still Linux Privesk Arena. And today we're gonna do the one called SSH keys. So I guess we just, just log in using our SSH credentials. And I think, yes, hacker. Now I think it's capitalized, one, two, three. And yeah, hacker, one, two, three. Hacker, one, two, three, yeah. All right, clear the screen, LS. So the, what we're gonna do today is exploit. Well, I want to type this. They want us to find something called authorized keys. Let's just go ahead and, and paste it in and, and see that it doesn't find anything. That is one thing. So in the command prompt, you can type this. So we're gonna look for something called ID RSA. So that is another way to search. And today we're gonna get the ID RSA, that is the private key. And if we can get the private key, um, we can basically just cat it out. This is the private key. If we could get the private key from the machine and that is not your private key, there are two different ways you can use this. Either it is not uh, with a password and you just well, use it, log in to the account with SSH tag I, and you supply the ID RSA, the username and the password, and then boom, you're good to go. But it could also contain a password, which basically means that you should use John the River, or John, just John, to crack the password. Before you do that, you need to prepare it for John the River using a tool called SSH to John. But depending on what we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and see. Exploitation, so copy the content of discovered IDSA file to your own attacker's VM. And what they actually tell us to do is basically one of the, the first, um, the, the first uh, method I, I talked about, which is basically SSH, tag I, the key, the name, the IP. So this is an easy one. So let's just go ahead and copy all this, say so copy, and let's just, Go ahead and create a new terminal. So doot, 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 doot. there we go. And then let's touch a file. Let's go ahead and make a directory called priv and go into priv, touch the file idrsa and nano into, I said nano into, if I can type, it would help a lot. There we go. Paste it in, and what I'm going to do now is to chmod 400. Uh, usually, usually it's uh, 600 we do, but I guess ssh i supply the file. It is root and it is on the IP of 1010 something. 142, 185, and you're gonna say yes, and you're root. Now this is one example of if you can get the 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 private key so yeah that's just another example of you know having a uh, private key without a password and if you know the username you can basically just log in directly you know but usually you do you need to supply a password while logging in uh, with the private key that is at least the, the better way to do security wise you know so let's just close this down and say this was this room and it was a pretty short video uh, what is the full path discovered so I guess we could um, go ahead and take this this is the full path and put it in as our answer and that's gonna be the answer for us for this particular task number seven Let's go ahead and do another task. Let's do task number eight. And let's just, at the same time, make sure that we just logged in right now, okay? This is a sudo um, exploitation. So we're gonna type sudo tag l to see what kind of commands we can execute with sudo writes. And we do, <laughs> all right. We see you can execute many different commands with sudo writes, and and one of them might be um, exploitable. Let's just see what the room tells us to do. Now, mm, they want us to use the uh, the find command, and if you use the find command, we can we can spawn a shell. We can also do the the A A W K teams. That's another way. 
Or we can do the a different ways to do it. So let's just take one of them, like this one, and basically just paste it in. And were we root? So this is another way of being root. The reason we can be root by executing this command is because, well, the find command is mentioned right here, and it basically gets, tells us, tells us that if we do sudo, because sudo tagl shows us which kind of binaries we can execute with the rights of the owner, and basically. That is uh, root. We can also do ls tag la and basically just try the the uh, user bin find, and you can see that the owner of the find command is root. And since we can execute it as root by typing sudo in front and give some some um, arguments, we can make it execute a bin shell. So that is going to be a new a new shell for us with the rights of root. Now, this is just one of the stupid ways you can get a shell and yeah, there are more ways you can test, but I guess you can try them. And I think task number nine is also another stupid pseudo exploitation. Once more, wants to type sudo tag l, and the exploitation is going to use uh, the sudo um, uh, Apache 2f. I'm already sure. Let's do exit here, clear, put that in, and it yeah, it 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 outputs the um, in, in some way this tag f command in Apache. I'm gonna go read up on that. You know, it's it's outputting the 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 hash for the root. And basically, that is another way of getting it. Then we can save it to a file and use John the River to actually um, crack it. So that is another way. Privilege escalation using the um, another sudo command. Uh, I think I'm going to save this for another video and stick to today's walkthrough of the. Was it like three or four different ways to get system root? And and basically, of course, you need to to detect tag l if you can execute any sort of command, and you can do it by well uh, with a higher privilege user. There's a slight good chance that you can actually use it to evaluate your privileges. So yeah, it's a really bad thing. Think about it. So until next time, take care.